Well, hey, 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 everybody. A happy Saturday and a trivia night. A classic movie. Uh, here we go. everybody welcome to the late late horror show what is going on <laughs> classic movie um yeah let's see if everybody starts rolling in uh pretty soon here huh um uh stop by the cashier's booth for single ginger says well i'm the only chick i guess i can start my poll routine now no other girls out there where is it oh there's kate clemens hey what's going on uh evening paul ham jim adams harry scott ginger um Oh, missing some people. Jeez. Hey, old time. Oh, rest in peace. Irene Cara, uh, for sure. Uh, let's say Thomas Gordon is here. Uh, good to see everybody. Um, uh, Win Bach. Hi, y'all. What's going on? Cindy Settles. Crazy. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, we have a classic one, man. Uh, the Ghost Breakers, 1940. Uh, now everybody's flowing on in. Hey, John Mickey. What's going on? It says, hi, everyone. What's going on? Uh, Susan Oliver. Love this movie from Orlando, Florida. Good to see you, Susan. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a trivia night here. We got some questions lined up. Some of them might be easy, but man, it's just about the enjoyment of this film. Uh, this is uh, easily in my top 10, maybe my top five of all time comfort films, uh, movies I, I just watch because makes me feel good, uh, makes me happy, makes me laugh, makes me smile, uh, all of that good stuff. Not to mention that it's a fantastic film. It's It's got Paulette Goddard. Mm. It's got Bob Hope. It's, uh, yeah, so, so it, it's just, you know, this is one of those movies, man. I just love it. And um, we are going to have some fun here. Uh, Janet C.W., I Should Be Asleep, uh, Love from Southwest Scotland. Uh, good to see you, Janet. Uh, staying up late. Uh, caught our stream. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. Janet, you're over in, in uh, uh, Scotland. You're, you're evidently able to, you probably subscribed already, I would guess. But uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, another thing I got to put out there, you guys, um, in, in just about a minute, I guess. Uh, but make sure you do all that. Check out the descriptions below. Uh, links to everything. Join the channel if you want. And the Patreon. And that brings me to... Uh, let me get this off my chest. Then we'll move on to the trivia night. And this wonderful, wonderful movie with the beautiful Paulette Goddard. But um, I do want to say... <clears throat> That Patreon has a Patreon has kind of dwindled itself. Uh, not sure why. Lost a lot of people since over this year, and um, I offer a movie night every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. But I figured, you know what? There is going to be one level. I am going to be working on it uh, this week. Uh, there is going to be one level. I do believe I'm going to make it the $10 level where I am going to post at least twice a week, maybe more, but at least twice a week, two 12-hour streams of old-time radio shows that I don't put on this channel, but are either the, the sports, comedy for sure, comedy, comedy, comedy. I've got thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Uh, I was putting them over on Dino's Duck Soup. Um, it's just, it, the, I'm focusing on the late, late horror show, but to bring more people into Patreon, I hope if they don't come, so be it, but it will be a $10 perk, uh, at least twice a week, maybe more of 12 hour streams of the greatest comedy musicals, um, news, sports, all of that stuff that don't fit here. 
will be on Patreon. So, you know, honestly, you guys, th that's kind of a cool thing. I know there's a lot of people that can't make it to Patreon, but I can't handle two different channels. I can't handle this channel. This is full time, man. But to handle a second channel, to put up all the comedy stuff, it just can't do it. So it's going to be a perk. And listen, there is a lot of stuff that will be going up there. 12 hour streams, like I said. So uh, will be a perk. And I will be doing a separate stream on that uh, other than this, just so that everybody knows who watches the channel that, hey, join the Patreon. The link is in the description. Um, and you're going to get all of that comedy stuff that I was starting up over on Dino's Duck Soup. But listen, uh, there's so much music in a lot of those and, and other things that, uh, you know, you almost can't even really put them on YouTube. But anyways, uh, Connie Clary is here. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'll be in chat when I can at a restaurant with parents. and Oh, Connie, enjoy, enjoy your time with your family. Uh, love you, man. Love you. Uh, I am indeed, uh, indeed he subscribed. I really on, rely on you so much. Awesome, Janet. Uh, enjoy your time with your family. Yes, Connie, please go do that. Do not worry about trivia night tonight. Uh, unless you want to listen in uh, wh why we're doing this. But listen, man, uh, this movie is fantastic. Is it me or is there no sound? There better be sound. If nobody's telling me, if everybody's telling me there's no, yeah, there's a mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's sound. Everybody can hear me, right? Uh, listen, I would have had a lot more people telling me there's no sound than just one person. But listen, this is a classic movie. I went back old school. Uh, you know, it's hit or miss sometimes with trivia nights because some people like the newer horror. Some people like the 80s horror. Some people like these older ones. But uh, anyways, um, Susan Oliver just subscribed. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you guys can all hear me, right? Yes. Yes. Huh? You guys can all hear me. Um, don't know what to say about that. Uh, let's see. Who, who was the one that said that? Uh, Paul Ham. Is it me or is there no sound? You, you must have. Uh, I hear voices sound great here. <laughs> Thomas Gordon. What the hell is wrong? Uh, anyways, um, let me get to the first question here. Um, Listen, overnight tonight, we have a um, uh, clues and crime, a detective, all old time radio shows all night long. So we got some Phil, we got them all. Philip Marlowe, some Johnny Dollar, some uh, Broadway's My Beat um, and others. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that tonight and um, drop off for a sec. But good now. Let me. Yeah, everything seems to be good. If any, if there's any problems with sound uh, to anybody else, just let me know. Everything looks good on my end, but uh, yeah, here we go, man. Uh, Ryan79, what's going on? I was a little kid growing up in the 80s, grew up on the Friday the 13th, Pumpkinhead, etc. LOL. Uh, Ryan79, done it all, man. Uh, trivia nights, I've had a lot of, I've done all the Halloweens, all the Friday the 13th. Um, a lot of the 80s horror I have done on this channel. Every once in a while, I like to go back to some of my favorites. And uh, Ghost, The Ghost Breakers is one of my favorites. One of my favorite comfort films. Uh, as much as Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, uh, pretty much. But Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein is probably my number one comfort f horror film. kind of. Co but comfort film to watch. Uh, I'm going to make a top 10 list of that too. That, that should be on the list too. My top 10 comfort films of all time. So there you go. Uh, with that said, Rich Cat Ranch showed up. Here she is. Here's my note from my mom to excuse my tardiness. <laughs> uh, good to see you, Rich Cat Ranch. Um, I was just mentioning uh, how everybody, uh, there's going to be a, a, a new level created this week on, on Patreon where all of the other shows, which are thousands and thousands, um, the comedies, the game shows, uh, all of those things will be on Patreon at least twice a week to gain momentum on Patreon, hopefully, hopefully, because uh, I've got the movie nights once a week. 
Now you're going to get two 12-hour streams of comedy or something twice a week at the $10 level, which I'll be posting everywhere so everybody knows. So anyways, let's get on to trivia night tonight. Uh, love, love, love. Good, I'm glad. Uh, good to see you. Yeah, Justin. Uh, the Wicker Man is mine. Uh, Wicker Man. Wicker Man is a great one. Um, not sure it's a comfort film for me, uh, but it's a great watch. Christopher Lee is fantastic. Uh, most of my comfort films come from the, the, the 30s and 40s. Um, I think it's because that's where I want to be, is the 30s and 40s. I mean, I want to be there, you know, and uh, everything just that was so great was in the 30s and 40s. But anyways, well, I mean, other than the depression, and, uh, but listen, you know, uh, I guess if you hit the wrong road at the wrong time, that's a bad era too. But when it comes to movies in Hollywood, I'm telling you, uh, I love old horror movies and horror comedies. My comfort films are Young Frankenstein. Yes. in uh, House of Wax with Vincent Price. Uh, Young Frankenstein would definitely be on my uh, top 10 list. Uh, listen, I'm going to make a top 10 list of my uh, my all-time favorite horror, comedy, horror, whatever, comfort film. So anyways, first question of the evening. I hope you guys know a little bit about the Ghost Breakers. I really do uh, because this... This needs to be, uh, because some of these, if you don't have, haven't watched the movie, you might not even know. Okay. So question number one. Oh, the beautiful Paulette Goddard. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, who plays Mary Carter in the movie and Bob Hope, who plays Larry Lawrence. I love that name. Like, uh, Bob Bobby. My name's Bob Bobby. Uh, this one's Larry Lawrence is his name. Uh, love it. He's, he's, uh, yeah. Anyways. Uh, here we go. Question number one. I can go on and on, but you know, hey, hey, Rover, what's going on? Rover, Rover, let me go on over. Love Christopher Lee, me too, Dino. Oh, hell yeah. Um, okay, so here we go. First question of the evening for the Ghost Breakers is Who was the sidekick who also played in the Charlie Chan films, uh, a couple of them, uh, especially Charlie Chan in Egypt. Mr. Modo, he was the Rochester uh, to Jack Benny. He was, yeah, kind of like that. So the sidekick to Bob Hope uh, in this film. Uh, name the name, either the character or the actor, and you get a point. Uh, this guy made some... Ugh, there you go, <laughs> right away. Uh, this guy made such a long. And Bob Hope said uh, he was. One, he said one of the greatest actors I've worked with. So uh, you know, as Ginger says there and gets the first point, uh, it is Will uh, Willie Best. Uh, one point to Ginger. Oh, nice going, Ginger. Yes, yes. Willie Best, uh, who plays Alex. Uh, Kind of like the Rochester character in the Jack Benny show. Um, but listen, uh, and again, a different day and age, a different time. It's history. They were portrayed in, you know, as butlers, as, as, you know, help and stuff like that. And that's just history. Bob Ho says, one of the greatest guys I ever worked with. Uh, Willie Best is a character who, in most of his films, so good. So good. Uh, I just love him in the movies. Anyways, uh, there was a scene in one of the Charlie Chan films that I was getting him confused with when I was getting the questions together, uh, where I'm like, it's in this movie, I thought, but where evidently it was where number one son, number two, number four, I which, forget which one. I think it was Benson Fong was the... Uh, Charlie Chan's son, who had, it wasn't Mantan Moreland, but I thought it was Willie Best, who they were on the ship, and he tried to give him measles, so, you know, don't touch him in bed, and it was just the funniest thing ever, but it wasn't in this movie, it was in one of the Charlie Chan movies, and um, anyways, Frank McCloud, what is going on, a young Bill Cosby, doop, 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 that's right, 
Uh, anyways, um, Willie Best lines were the best. Listen, Susan Oliver, the lines in this movie, as they're not proper and they aged very badly nowadays, but see, I'm smart enough to be able to look at a 1940s movie and go, listen, this was 1940s. Willie Best loved doing, he acted for decades and decades, did so many films, it's not even funny. And um, the one-liners that they say in this movie, Bob Hope and Willie Best, are just spot on. I mean, they are so funny for the time. Funny. Uh, but anyways, one point to Ginger. Yes. Or was it put in pops? Uh, have you ever featured the old dark house? Um, I've got plenty of, uh, old dark. Ho well, I know I've got a full commentary on the old dark house, which is going back years ago, uh, that me and Ted did. Um, I don't think I've done a trivia night on the old dark house, but that's, I don't think so but yes check out my channel for listen you got to go back there's seven years of content on this channel the first half or the first five years were or four years were all movie commentaries and discussions so uh, you name an 80s cheesy horror movie or horror movie classics like i know i've done like the top 10 horror movies from the 30s the 40s uh, it's on the channel so definitely uh, look back. The Old Dark House, again, I think one of the best horror films of all time from that era. Uh, just so, so good. Okay, here we go. Um, Emily, is Emily here? WWM, hello, sorry I'm late. Good to see you, uh, WWM. Um, CM is here. What's going on? Good to see you. Uh, here I go. So next question. Let's get to another one. Let's get to another one. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Uh, not sure we're going to hit a hundred in record time tonight. Uh, probably won't even hit a hundred because this is an older movie, but you never know. Um, hit the thumbs up if you haven't already and, uh, definitely join the channel or the Patreon where there will be new perks going up with old time radio shows that are not on this channel and will not be on this channel because they're comedies and uh, I very rarely put anything like that up here. Uh, and game shows. There's so many game shows from the 50s and a couple from the 40s that are just so funny and so good. And uh, question number two. What was the name of the remake of this film in 1953? So just name the film. Uh, what was the remake, uh, the name of the remake of this film in 1953? And you, you, for an extra, yep, yeah, yeah, I was going to say for an extra point. And, and who coasted? Yes, it was Scared Stiff with Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Scared Stiff. So Rich Cat uh, came in. She's got a point. So good job, Kathy. Uh, coming in real fast. What do elves say when they eat dinner? Nom, 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 nom. Okay, got it. Ghostbreakers 2. <laughs> uh, scared Stiff. Listen. Uh, I love Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis movies, and Scared Stiff was a uh, was a good one. Um, uh, I mean, it, it, it scene by scene. I mean, they they really broke it down very similar to the Ghostbreakers. This one with Bob Hope and Paulette Goddard. Uh, they really did do a good job. I mean, I really really enjoyed it. Uh, did I enjoy it as much as this? No, but uh, listen, it was a very good uh, movie and. How can you go wrong with Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis? Uh, they were uh, awesome. Uh, worth a shot. Let's see. What, okay, okay. So, so question number three. Here we go. So far, Ginger's got a point. Rich Cat Ranch has got a point. Um, and again, tonight we got time stamps and uh, detectives uh, all night long. So there you go. Question number three. Let's Speaking of old time radio shows. Uh, hey, Stump. What's going on? Uh, good evening. Uh, good to see you. Ryan79 says, The first movie I ever saw in a theater was Ghostbusters. I was four years old and cried the whole time. No. Uh, 
to Ghostbusters? I know you were four, but Ghostbusters was fun. I guess it could scare a four-year-old. Um, the first movie I seen in the theater was Logan's Run. Logan's Run. Um, I haven't seen it since. And I don't think, for some reason, I don't think it's going to hold up the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was the second run theater. I don't think it was right when it came out, but I know I was like an infant. I'm not an infant, but a toddler because it's so vague during that period. But Logan's Run, they took me to see. House on Haunted Hill, man, Justin says. Good one, good one. Hey, Schultz, what's going on? Uh, my first movie in the theater was Dr. No, but I was a newborn infant, <laughs> uh, says Rich Cat. Um, Logan's Run, nice, Dino. Yeah, no, it was, I remember it. It, it was, you know, how certain things in your, like, from, from, like, one year old to four, like, kind of stick in your head. That did for some reason. Uh, I don't know why. Return of the Jedi was mine. Early memory at the dri driving theater. Uh, very cool. Speaking of old time, hey, Stump, love you, <laughs> too, Dino. Uh, awesome. Okay, anyways, uh, on to the next question. Speaking of old time radio shows, here we go. Which old time radio show broadcast a radio version of this film with Bob Hope reprising the role? They did it twice. One, the first one was half hour show the second one was a couple years later uh and it was an hour long and bob hope reprised his role for um both of them and so what old time radio show was it that streamed it and you should know because i've i've streamed it on this channel if you guys remember um oh look at that look at that uh rich cat ranch has got it uh, very good Rich Cat Ranch. Yes, Screen Directors Playhouse, uh, which I did not too long ago. Um, very good Rich Cat Ranch. Yes, they, they usually got a lot of the actors from the movies that they did um, and, and played them, reprised their roles. Uh, so it was really pretty cool. Uh, for a lot of the actors of the period to reprise their roles in a lot of these shows. They did it, and Lux Radio Theater did it sometimes, too. They they were able to get, but they usually got big-name actors to play uh, the roles, for sure. Um, but yes, uh, looks like Rich Cat is the only one on IMDb. But um, <laughs> uh, good job there. Uh and I'll tell you, the beginning of this movie, man, where it's just lightning, thunder, lightning, uh, the ghost breakers, it's, it's such, it's your typical, like, kind of haunted horror movie. Like, you know, something spooky is going to happen. Although, the feel of the movie from after that first 10 minutes till the end um, kind of feels more like, like an old Charlie Chan film or, you know, something like that. Uh, or Ab even Abbott and Costello kind of feel. Like, you know, th there's this mystery going on and, and, and who's kind of trying to blackmail her, you know what I mean? So uh, it's got a different feel to it. But, uh, you know, it definitely opens up uh, with a horror theme, that's for sure. Uh, I'm trying. My memory isn't working, says Harry Scott. That's all right. Um there's some other ones coming up here that's pretty easy, too. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to sit back and let Kathy win again. <laughs> Listen, do your homework, man. I don't know what more to tell you. Uh, question number four. Here's a hard one. Let's see if anybody can get this one. Um, yeah. CBS Radio Mystery Theater, Kate Clemens says. Um well, they were original shows, so they got writers from the area, the era, era to do original. Um, I mean, a lot of some of them were adapted. I mean, actually, a lot of them were adapted from stories from uh, authors and stuff. But you know, there was a lot of original um, storylines in, in CBS Radio Mystery Theater. But uh, here's a toughie. Let's see who can get it. Question number four. 
what was the name of the castle in the film? The castle where uh, Mary Carter, uh, Paulette Goddard, has to has inherited and has to get to. So what was the name of that castle? And did I mention how beautiful Paulette Goddard looked in this film? Did I, me- did I mention? And did I also mention? Oh, I'll say it after this. Um, oh, gee. You know what? Yeah, Kathy. She's the only one that's got a keyboard in front of her, I think. Uh, so point number three. Yeah, you know what, Kathy? You're going to make my job much harder now from this point forward. Because when it comes to trivia nights, I'm going to have to not go to specific places <laughs> that can be. I guarantee you guys, the upcoming trivias are going to be a bit different. <laughs> because to some, it could be easy. Listen, if you got a keyboard, you <laughs> I can set my playback speed slower. No, no, Rich Cat, you're good. You win it, you win it. You know, I don't know what to tell you. But did I also mention, so Kathy's got her uh, third point. It is a Castile a Maltido, uh, which, uh, oh my God, I don't have it written down. Uh, it, it stands for something, um, scary uh, castle, whatever. Um, anyways, uh, did I also mention that the actor who plays in here, you see him at, at the docks. You see him at the docks uh, with Willie uh, Best. He's the guy who plays a drunk in about a hundred films in the thirties and forties. He played a drunk in the Charlie Chan films. I think he was in a Sherlock. I'm not sure, but uh, he played a drunk. He had it. He had it down pat. He could stumble. And he was, he was the drunk to go to for Hollywood. They said, when they said, ah, oh, there's a drunk character. Oh, call him up. So uh, very, very cool. Uh, not Froster Brooks. I'm on a tablet. I couldn't read my handwriting on that. Sweet Rich can't wait to go. Not Foster Brooks. I can't spell anyway. Castle Frankenstein. <laughs> Castle Frankenstein. Grace Castle Grace Uh Oh yeah. We oh we can do some wrong answers at at the end of this. That would be good. Uh, yeah. We that was fun at the end of the last one. Um, yeah, I've got to I've got to schedule that in advance. But listen, a lot of great upcoming shows, you guys. Uh, Definitely some good stuff. Um, okay, got my pumpkin pie. All is good now, says Jim Adams. Yeah, everybody's still eating their uh, Thanksgiving uh, food. Uh, Ginger's got one more day left to make up a turkey salad tomorrow. Now, she mentioned that this is the la- tomorrow's the last day, 24 more hours. So that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You know, a good four or five, five days and yeah, you, you need to toss it uh, unless you free froze it, you know. So anyways, um, there you go. I pity the fool. Uh, good old Hollywood lushes. Uh, I'm searching too, says Schultz. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, there you go. There you go. Okay, so next question. Let's see what you guys do here. Um Let's see. Uh, You know, I'm going to throw this question in real quick out of nowhere because I I, kind of it's kind of a big plot point in the film. And it's the reason everything happens after, you know, it's where the mystery starts for uh, Larry Lawrence, uh, Bob Hope's character. Uh, Who was after? And you could say it in vague terms. Uh, and I'll accept the answer. But who was after Larry Lawrence, uh, Bob Hope's character, uh, early on in the film at the very start of this movie? Uh, if you get my question. If you don't, so be it. Uh, that one's just off the cuff. But um, plays a part in this. Um, he, he runs uh, to the hotel. And from there, everything kind of ensues. But who was he running from? 
are coming to see, coming to see, and then ran from um, at the hotel. So there you go. Does anybody know? Uh, turkey salad, I'm extra mayonnaise. Uh, Richard said he was tired of turkey already. <laughs> yeah, you know, you could get sick of it pretty quick, I'm sure. Uh, Susan Oliver says uh, there was also a scene from this movie where Paulette Goddard is walking down the stairs. That was in another movie. It was a Snoop Sister movie. Yeah, I don't know, Susan Oliver. Very interesting. Uh, Paul Ham, there you go, buddy. Paul Ham's getting the uh, answer. See, I, I ha just thought of that off the top of my ha uh, ham. <laughs> I thought of that off the top of my ham. Uh, top, top of my head. Because um, I'm trying to think of other questions that might not be so easy. But yes, it was the gangsters. Um, I, I'm not sure of the name in particular, but he had something going on with the gangsters, probably some kind of bet, something like that. And he was going to see them all that, at the, then everything ensues. So yes, it was the gangsters. I'll accept that. There you go. Paul Ham, good on you. Dino hams it up. <laughs> I know it's not horror, but to shop around the corner, 1940 is also great comfort. Ryan 79. Listen, the shop around the corner is the first movie I put in around Christmas time. The first movie. Uh, then it's a wonderful life. Uh, same kind of movie, kind of. Uh, it's, it's actually, uh, they remade the movie, You've Got Mail, Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan. It's kind of the same, it's the same movie, uh, A Shop Around the Corner. But uh, Jimmy Stewart is fantastic in that movie. And it's a Christmas movie. And uh, Capra, it's, it's, I love that film. And I didn't see that film until years after I seen It's a Wonderful Life. And It's a Wonderful Life is classic. I mean, that goes in every single year. But shop around the corner. If you have not seen it yet, you guys, and you love the old, like, It's a Wonderful Life, the Christmas movies, you must watch the shop around the corner. It's not horror, but it's Christmas themed. It's a lovely, lovely movie. And one, everybody should start watching every Christmas uh, it is at the top of my list uh, to watch every Christmas, that's for sure. Um, yeah, see, not as many people jumping in on this uh, this week. A uh, little bit harder, I think, maybe. I don't know, maybe an older movie? Uh, let's see, I've never heard of that movie. Oh, Rich Cat, you have got to watch The Shop Around the Corner. Jimmy Stewart. Oh, and the, the love, the romance. It's like Tom... You know, Hanks and, and Meg Ryan. It's it's you've got mail, but and and you know, uh, yeah. Earlier times, uh, most Capra movies are great. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Dino's a big softy. I am Frank. I don't know what to say, man. <laughs> My heart gushes. My heart gushes. Uh, M, what's going on? Every Christmas, my family watch the entire Thin Man movie series. A good one to put in. Um, they're not really. You know, there are some movies in the day that's not relatively Christmas themed, but remind you of Christmas. Like uh, Arsenic and Old Lace. It's another one that, for some reason, around the Christmas Christmas time, it's one I put in. You know, fall starting and, and all that stuff. And Arsenic and Old Lace is one that I kind of, you know, going to be watching here again soon. So, yeah. A very good one. I will find it and watch it. Uh, it's on my must-watch. It's Wonderful Life. So, Rich Cat, you are going to love me for bringing that up. Well, or Susan. Susan for bringing it up. Although I bring it up a bunch of times on my channel because I love it so much. Um, Steerpike! Cheerio, my good friend! Uh, Steerpike, how, how about... The Shop Around the Corner. You must love that, my friend. Uh, such a good movie. Amanda Pizzolato. Pizzolato. So, so far, three versions for Little Shop Around the... For Shop Around the Corner. One for Christmas, one for Thanksgiving, and one for Summer. LOL. Um, yeah. I think... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know... Which one's the Thanksgiving? Anyways, it doesn't matter. Let me move on. 
to the next question and we can continue to talk. Arsenic and Old Lace was one of my favorite plays. It was so much fun to do. Yepper, Stairpike, uh, definitely know that. Uh, one of the plays he uh, played in and um, acted in. And Arsenic and Old Lace is, is one of the greats. One of the greats. Uh, so anyways, here we go. Here's the next question. Uh, Rich Cat with three, Paul Ham with one, and Ginger with one. If you've seen the movie, what did Larry Lawrence, Bob Hope's character, leave in Paulette Goddard's hotel room that may have given him away to the police? I don't think I need to repeat that question, but I will anyways. Uh, what did uh, Larry Lawrence leave in Paulette Goddard's, uh, Mary Carter, uh, her hotel room that may have given him away to the police who were right. Oh. As I repeat the question, as I repeat the question, Paul Ham comes up with it. CM's got it. Paul Ham gets point number two. Uh, very good. Yes, it is the polka dotted silk scarf around Bob Hope's neck that he leaves behind. I'd leave some. You remember George Costanza would always leave something behind in Seinfeld uh, so that he can have a reason to go back again and and and, and see the woman that dumped him. <laughs> Costanza. <laughs> Very good. Uh, hey, Kathy. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. Much love. Hello, hello, hello. Um, let's see. Uh, his leg since Frank McCloud. Uh, Jim Adams says uh, iPhone. <laughs> hey, we'll do wrong answers at the end. We'll do wrong answers at the end. Uh, Amanda Pizzolato says you've got mail is more Thanksgiving. Good old summertime for summer and shop around the corner for Christmas. Exactly, Amanda. Exactly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, and also Scarf. Yeah, Conan Schultz, yes, was listening. In. Okay. Uh, everybody wish Kathy good luck on Wednesday. Uh, been a stressful time finding the house of her dreams. And Wednesday is the moving day. So uh, good luck, Kathy, to you and your family uh, on your move and all of that good stuff. And we will sit here and entertain until then. Uh, and now I think of Paula Goddard again. Uh, she is so, so beautiful in this movie. Um, later on when she jumps off the boat and sw oh, well, I better not give nothing away. Better not give nothing away. Uh, she, she's in a swimsuit a la Creature from the Black Lagoon. You know, got the head and diving. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Um, yeah, so everybody, very good. Scarf, scarf, scarf. Uh, George Costanza rocks. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart is one of my favorite actors. Rear Window is probably in my top five of all time. Sorry for the interrupting the trivia. As long as you're not saying stuff about the movie to give away trivia, that's fine. Uh, I love your comments you're giving, uh, Ryan. Um, yes, uh, Rear Window is definitely, probably, it's a tough call. Uh, um, I think it's it's definitely my, my favorite Alfred Hitchcock film. Um Top 10 list, it's it's close for me. It's definitely in my top 20. Uh, but I love Rear Window. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, you guys are saying some good stuff here tonight. I'm loving it. Ophelia Payne. Ophelia Payne. Ophelia Payne. What is going on? Good to see you. Hello, hi, and all that good other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, been a while since I've seen you on the channel, Ophelia Payne. Uh, but good to see you. Good to see you. And again, everybody, uh, everybody who's just jumping in, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And you know what? I am going to push Patreon a little bit here because we have movie nights every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm going to start putting up two nights a week on Patreon everything that I can't put on here, which is thousands upon thousands of comedy shows, uh, game shows, musicals, uh, romance, soap operas, you name it. Uh, sports, news, there's even some UFO interviews and stuff like that that are just so interesting that I'll be putting up there. But 12-hour streams, uh, two nights a week, 
I'll be working on it this week, so be sure to join the Patreon. Um, well, I never knew about this lady. Paulette Goddard is beautiful. Oh, she is a sight to behold. Uh, Hitchcock, stage fright, uh, Alistair Sims. I feel your pain too, Dino, <laughs> right? Uh, Patreon movie nights are awesome. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, they are fun. We all meet up about a half hour before start talking, you know, chatting amongst ourselves. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, I've be been away for a bit. Yeah, yeah, I feel your pain. Uh, good to see you back. Next question. This one should be an easy one too. How was Larry Lawrence, Bob Hope's uh, character, able to escape from Paulette Goddard's room to evade the police? So how was Larry Lawrence able to escape Paulette Goddard's room to evade the police? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? No, no. Ryan79! Whoa! Much love to you, my friend. Welcome to the family. Glad I found this channel. I'm glad you did, too. Thank you very much for the $20 super chat. Uh, much love goes out to you, my friend. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, you, you might want to join either the channel or the Patreon for a lot of extra stuff. So there you go. But the support goes a long way towards helping me out. That's why I'm trying to build a Patreon again, uh, trying my hardest. Don't want to slack off on the channel. Uh, I, I try to give you guys nightly, nightly stuff. Let's see who won and got that. But thank you, thank you, thank you, Ryan. Can't say it enough. Much love to you. Um, you know, I know that Paul Ham watched this film or at least knows it by heart. Uh, you get the point first. Um, three points to you, which ties you with Kathy, Rich Cat Ranch, uh, and Ginger with one. It is in the trunk. He pulls out every single one of her dresses, which uh, uh, Paulette Goddard gets pissed about. Oh, my dresses, all beautiful. You know, the luxury, the class of the Hollywood actresses in these movies back in the day were just so beautiful. And, and it's something that I just love. Listen, I, I'm an old soul. Those things I just find beautiful. And... Uh, Oh, there's, yeah, yeah. What more can I say? But he, he slips into the trunk and they take it out of the uh, hotel. And uh, that is how he escapes. That is how he escapes. So Paul Ham with three, Rich Cat Ranch with three, Ginger with one. Uh, and another thank you to Ryan. Uh, you know, you're part of the family now. Uh, hopefully uh, you like old time radio shows too. Um, they stream 12 hours every single night overnight from uh, 10 p.m. Eastern to 10 a.m. Eastern. So there you go. Um, let me uh, catch up here. Uh, -dum -bum -bum. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. All those poor clothes on the floor because he got in the trunk. Yeah, yeah. And listen, uh, yeah, it was a very funny scene too, especially down at the uh, down at the docks. Down at the docks for. He, he punches a hole through, you know, back in the day, all the trunks would have stickers from everywhere you would travel. You know what I mean? And, and it was just, it was a cool thing, you know? So if you ever find an old trunk at an antique store or um, garage sale or something like that, uh, and it's got stickers like that all over it, grab it. Just to pick up on all that energy of where it's been. It's taken trips to all of those places. Uh, it's rare to find them now, but sometimes you come across them at uh, estate sales and stuff like that. But uh, very cool. Uh, let's see. Um, so it was the trunk. The trunk is how he escaped from her room. Um, let's see. Paul Ham, I do know it well. Very good. Uh, uh, don't want to miss any of uh, In a trunk. Yes, yes. So classy for sure. A favorite horror comedy right there with A and C meet uh, Frankenstein, says Paul Ham. Yep. Uh, I put this, this is like right there. It's like Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. That's what I'm going to watch. That's what I'm going to watch. And then Ghostbreakers, the Ghostbreakers. That's right underneath it. Those are my horror comedies and comfort films that I definitely pop in there 
right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let, let me see. Yeah, see, I'm going to have to do a whole stream where I just push the Patreon, let everybody know about what's going on. Because, yeah, nobody's joined. But uh, definitely go, hey, you know, 73 thumbs up. We, we definitely might hit 100 um, tonight. So that's pretty cool. I'm an ancient soul, Dino, says Justin. <laughs> uh eh, that's all right that's all right ancient soul uh reminds me of the um vampire you vampire um abu dhabi um oh yeah two classes i have my 85 year old aunt's travel trunk filled with stickers oh very cool ocean and welcome evening to you uh my friend good to see you uh, each, have I said that I love y'all? Uh, each and every one of you guys, uh, always here, always supporting the channel, always chanting it up amongst yourselves. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for always being here and being part of this uh, this channel um, for as long as a lot of you guys have too. And for the, all the new people that are joining, like Ryan, uh, gotta love it. Um, Ryan says the three stooges spook louder short is also a fave of mine. Had a lot of VHS tapes as a kid. Yeah. All of the horror three stooges ones are, are great. I, I like all of the horror ones. They're great. And, and they're, most of them are later with Shemp, which is fine. And, and they're just fantastic. Uh, okay. So next question, here we go. Oh my God. I guess I better get through some of these questions. Um, question number seven, here we go. What other film in 1939 starred both Bob Hope and Paulette Goddard? Two films they did together. So what is the other film in 1939 that starred Bob Hope and Paulette Goddard? Another classic. Another one that... Oh, I'm trying to see where I would place it in my list of of uh yep yeah, yeah, there you go yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. i'm just here to meet this ginger person whoever they are uh frank mcleod i'm i'm not sure there's a girly girl um who paints her nails um hello everybody uh paul ham gets it first um cat in a canary cat in a canary paul ham takes the lead with four points uh, the Cat and the Canary. Very, very well done. Shemp was an original, says Kate Clemens. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, also, a couple other people. Kate Clemens got the Cat and the Canary. Amanda got the Cat and the Canary. Uh, very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, the Cat the Cat and the Canary with Bob Hope and Paulette Goddard is definitely up there Uh for the de uh, the decade, the 30s, definitely, 1939, right in that area there. Uh, a very well-done mystery, uh, horror mystery, you know, uh, very, very well. Uh, RTN Productions, Denny, High Boy Donuts, and Low Girl Coffee. What is going on? Good to see you. Um, says, hi, the Late Late Horror Show and Late Late Horror Show family. Sorry I'm late. Was talking to a friend. Nothing to be sorry about. I hope you had a good talk with your friend there, uh, Denny. Uh, love life. Enjoy your friends and family and all that good stuff. Uh, that's my headstone, Ginger. She painted her nails and you used lots, a lot of mayo. <laughs> Hold on. I got to repeat that again. Um, Ginger says, that's my headstone. Ginger, she painted her nails. And used a lot of mayo. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Don't ever forget that. I'm, that should go on a t-shirt, Ginger. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> that's a good one. I love it. I'll take pepperoni on, on my tombstone. Good good choice, Justin. Um, family, family. Good to see family. Yeah, yeah. And there's a... There's a a man who, who comes in to Paulette Goddard's uh, life, he's, he's the love interest. You know, Bob Hope, you know, he's the comic relief, you know, kind of, you know, hey, I really love dig this chick. You know, I really dig Mary Carter. I'm in love with her. But she's, 
you know, you're not sure what's going on. And this other guy, Jeff, comes in who is a guy who was in a lot of Charlie Chan films, too. Uh, he's another actor who popped in uh, some of the, the old Charlie Chan films. And um, he, uh, along with Anthony Quinn, is in this film. Anthony Quinn is in this film. And um, he plays a partner. He's a little annoying. He's a little, a little annoying character. But anyways, on to my next question. Uh, might as well try and get through these questions. The Ant and the Aardvark was the sequel to The Cat and the Canary. Uh, here we go, Denny. Here we go. Richard Carlson. Yeppers, Paul Ham. Um, okay, so next question. Again, you, you, Paul Ham will probably get this. He's seen the movie. Uh, what is the name of the island where the castle sits? So what is the name of the island where the castle sits? Doesn't really sit, but you, you get what I'm saying? You get, you get my, you, you just, ah, this is the second time tonight. Ginger says, my headstone would say. What, what did she say? That my headstone says. She painted her nails and used a lot of mail. But that was bad today. What is going on with me? Uh, yeah, no, no, um, no, Parma of <laughs> RT and Denny. What the, what the heck? Uh, I'm, I'm simultaneously looking through old catalogs that I got from my parents. Oh, my. JC Pennies or Sears? Yeah, nice, nice. Sears Montgomery. Okay, uh, here we go. Paul Ham. Paul Ham. Uh, five points to you. Yes. Uh, Black Island it is. Black Island. Uh, RTN says Castle Island. Um, good one. The Island of Dr. Moreau, says Frank. Oh, that's another great movie. If you haven't seen the original, The Island of Dr. Moreau. You know what? The sad thing is with this film, too, again, you guys, Sad thing with this. Uh, hold on. Let me make sure I get this. Um, Paul Ham. Okay. Island. Island. Castle. Maldonado. Uh, Justin's trying to say the name of the castle, but the island was uh, Black Island. So there you go. Dino's headstone will say his Howard Cosell and his Don Adams sound identical. How about my... It's like really... really uh, you know, forget it. No voices tonight. Uh, JLR, what is going on? Hugs to you. Good to see you. Uh, waves, waves, waves. We can Castle Island here in Boston. Oh, nice. Bert Thiesland. The sad part about Old Hollywood. There were two other versions of this film in the silent era. Both lost forever. Both lost forever. One was done by Cecil B. DeMille. Cecil B. DeMille. Um, such a shame. All of the movies, a, a large chunk of the movies made during the silent era, people didn't know how to handle it. The chemical processes of, of storing them. All lost. Two films prior to this filmed in the silent air and, and totally lost forever, totally lost forever. It is so sad to me. Uh, ah, Justin lost forever. Lost, lost. Am I saying lost? It's lost forever. L that's not a bad thing there, Justin, but, um, lost, lost forever. We can lost forever too, you know, whatever. Too enough, Dino, too busy trying to be clever. <laughs> Uh, I hear you. A lot of silent stuff went to Vinegar Syndrome and are now lost, sadly. Yepper. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome, a, a, uh, a DVD, a uh, Blu-ray company out there right now with that brings out some very good, you know, copies of some movies. Okay, so here we go. Good to know, Frank. He has a lust for life. Uh, 80s. 80% of the silent air firms are lost. Nitro, nitrate film shock, I know. Oh, Denny, don't say it. It's hard to... I know, listen, 
for a cinephile and for somebody who loves the whole process and, and loves old Hollywood. Listen, I love everything from the beginning, that 1900 on. I mean, it's, it's just 1900, 1940s. That's my. And, and yeah, 80%. Man, it's so freaking sad. Coffee, 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 Jim. Coffee, 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 Jim. Ho coffee shop of horrors. Coffee shop of horrors. Uh, soon to have the late, late after the beginning of the year. The late, late horror show coffee. Uh, chocolate mint. Uh, anyways, next question. Let's keep it moving. Uh, London After Midnight, another great movie. Uh, but yeah, man. Oh my God. I don't even want to talk about it no more. Let's, let's move on. Uh, let's move on. So, question number nine is, what is Larry Lawrence's profession in this movie? What is Larry Lawrence's profession in this movie? Bob Hope's character. What is his, what is his profession in this movie? Um, somewhat. I propose to the channel. Um, oh, Rich Cat says a reporter, but a little bit more than that. Um, Paul Ham has it with radio personality. Yes, he did shows, he acted, commercials, um, news, uh, all of that stuff. So, but he was a personality, he, he did shows. He was, uh, that's everybody knew him. Hey, you're Larry Lawrence. Uh, so yes, yes, yes. Wasn't the film uh, stock highly flammable to Thomas Gordon? Yes, a lot of them, a lot of them caught on fire. A lot of them. There were, I forget what director it was, but the whole storage of film caught fire. <laughs> and it's like, I'm laughing about it in hysterics. That it even happened, but yeah, th that easy. And imagine being that person and looking at it and going, it's all gone. So, oh, I don't, it's sad, it's sad. But yes, he was a radio personality. Um, you can say a reporter because he did do some uh, some reporting on, anyway, so that, that, that's it. The streetwalker. Frank McCloud, he's a streetwalker, crime reporter, radio broadcaster. There you go. Uh, uh, accountant, uh, Harry, Harry Scott. Um, Amanda, radio personality reporter. Yep, yep, yep. Um, either one I would have taken. Like like if Rich Cat, you would have said a reporter first. Um, I probably would have given it to you. Although, reporter, you could do newspaper stuff or radio stuff. So, uh, he's on the radio um, with the microphone in front of him. Hey, this is KJLBTL. What's going on? Uh, anyways, uh, nitrates of that. They also stripped the silver nitrate from the film stock. <sighs> yeah. Well, we tried, Kathy. Yep, yep. Paul Ham's got uh, five points. Rich Cat three. Ginger one. Uh, on to the next question. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. Uh, bang, bang, boom. Um, everything's looking good. Just making sure the streams are looking good. Making sure the streams are looking very, very good to me. Huh? What do you say for that? Huh? Uh, shut up in your face. Shut up in your face. Um, wow, we're getting through this pretty quick. There, there's a scene where... Um, they're on the uh, ship. Um, oh, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't uh, say nothing yet. Let's see. Let me get to the next question. This is a pretty easy one, too, I think. Um, listen, I threw in a, a couple very easy ones. Uh, what country are they headed to once on the ship? What country are they headed to once on the ship? And a lot of people went there back in the 40s and the 30s. <laughs> uh, Cuba. Yes, Paul Ham says Cuba. Havana, Cuba. Havana, Cuba. Yes, yes, yes. What's the matter for you? Ah, why do you make me sad? No. Uh, 
They all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, for some reason, everybody was going, because the time, it, it was, it was a resort place, you know, before the communism and all, uh, this, uh, we won't talk about that. Anyways, um, uh, Siberia, uh, Korea, Australia, <laughs> Milwaukee, Muncie, Indiana, <laughs> John Doe. Hello, everyone. Not staying long. Thanks for stopping stopping in. Man, I got the hiccups now. Uh, hope that food's tasting good, Connie. If you're still listening while you're, you know, but hopefully the food's going good and company's fine. So, mm. there's a scene before she meets her kind of love interest, uh, the douche face. Um, uh, where Bob Hope comes into the room and he's, he's there and he tells her, I'm here to protect you and watch over you. And he is throughout the entire movie. Larry Lawrence is, is protecting Mary Carter and looking out for her interests. And it's, it's a lovely thing. And they start doing this old time dance, you know, in the room of, of the ship. And uh, there's something about movies from the 30s and 40s on, on cruise lines that are just romantic. And... I love them. I love them to death. Uh, they're just, but he starts dancing with her and they're getting close and uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Anyways, next question. Next question. Of course, hitting the thumbs up. Uh, thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Doe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, definitely always good to see you. Um, 80 thumbs up. We're 20 away from a hundred, 20 uh, thumbs up away from a hundred. Boom, bang, boom. Uh, we should plan a late, late horror show cruise. <laughs> Listen, I, I am working hard to try to get something together, a kind of a convention, old time radio type thing, but kind of late, late horror show type convention next summer uh, where space is available and the hotel is connected um, and it, it would be an all nighter with all of us. Uh, who can make it and others because I am trying to pull in other people that may uh, make it a very cool kind of convention. It's a task I'm finding out to do, but not undoable. And I am trying to put that together, but uh, let's see. Um, anyways, uh, boo, did that help, uh, with your hiccups? <laughs> Jim Adams, actually a couple sips and it's gone now. So we should plan. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Ryan 70 says, I remember watching a news report, uh, out of Cuba around 10 years ago and pretty much the entire population drives 1950s cars. It, yes. It's, 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 a, it's changed. It's a different place, but it was Cuba, Monte Carlo, a lot of the movies. That's where they went. Um, Casablanca, pajama party, um, yeah, that would be fun. Um, but we would be listening to some of our favorite shows all night and hanging out together, tables with, with, with snacks and stuff like that. It would, it would be a fun, fun time. Uh, but anyways, next question. Here we go. Oh God. Uh, okay. No, I'm not there yet. Okay. So what do the locals practice on Black Island? What do the locals practice on Black Island? And I think you know what I mean. What kind of worship, man. What are they doing? What are they doing on this island, Black Island? There's some creepiness going on. <laughs> Paul Ham gets it first. <laughs> it looks like Paul Ham's pulling it out. He's got seven points now. Yes. That voodoo that you do so well. So well, uh, yes, it's voodoo. Uh, the, the, the voodoo witch priestess, who is scary. Allah, it looks like the same gypsy woman in uh, The Wolfman. I know it's not. Maybe? I have to look at that again uh, on IMDb. But yeah, everybody's got voodoo. But yes, they, they practice voodoo and there's... This weird, her her zombie son or whatever he is, but he's he's uh oh we got one. Look at that! Oh, thank you. Make sure it's it's hidden. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, they got through. Uh, I should look real quick. D did I... Do I have this? Oh, I don't have it only subscribers mode. So that's why. And that's that's why I keep it only subscribers mode. But, uh, you know, I, I can change it real quick. But so it don't keep happening. Let's see. Uh, I'm just changing this real quick. Um, custom, uh, da, 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 boom, boom, boom. But yeah, Paulette Goddard, she's such, she's such a beautiful dame. <laughs> she's, just, she's a beautiful dame. Uh, so I think I got that right. And now changed. So there you go. Um, spam free zone. Yeah. Well, I usually do that, Kathy, but, um, you know, uh, there's also a scene where she's uh, Paulette Goddard's characters on the ship, Mary Carter, and uh, yeah, uh, Patriot Party. Uh, th there's a scene on the ship where she's in her cabin, and this knife. Ga I love uh, when when they're these movies back in the day, always in a ship in a cabin in these mystery thrillers and uh, shows, movies. Uh, there's always a knife that flies in from outside the little window. And sticks in the wall or the door or whatever. And she gets one. And it, it's this little voodoo charm uh, that is is hanging there. And uh, Jeff comes in and tells uh, uh, Mary Carter. He's, he's like, yeah, that's a bad omen. It's what the voodoo uh, would do. or Yeah, they would do to kind of scare you off. Or, anyways, anyways, that is in the movie too goodbye spam no spiced ham hair bots means getting noticed um well listen i don't want them though that's why it's the channel is always in, in the subscribers mode but uh okay so next question listen this is the one and only time that i'm talking politics on the channel <laughs> okay oh anyway oh i, I might have given away uh what does bob hope refer refer to refer the island zombie as so the island zombie, you, you'll, you, if you've seen the movie, you know, is, is kind of controlled by the voodoo priestess. And um, they're on the ship, and he's talking to Paulette Goddard, and he says this line. He goes, he, and you, everybody knows that Bob Hope throughout his years was very p political and said many things in many movies. And this one was, what does Bob Hope refer to the island zombie as? <laughs> okay, so there you go. One only time. Uh, looks like Rich Cat got it. Uh, let me just make sure. Yes, Rich Cat. Uh, Democrats are zombies. So uh, another point for you, Rich Cat. That gives you four. Paul Ham with uh, seven. And Ginger with one. Uh, but yeah, listen, he always gets those jabs in is what he does. Uh, and on to the next question. Here we go. Here we go. This one is pretty easy, too, and I just came up with really quick. Um, what is the first thing uh, Larry Lawrence and Alex, who is uh, Willie, Willie's character. Um, so, Larry and Lawrence, what is the first thing uh, Larry and Alex, his sidekick, are scared of at the castle what's the first thing that scares them at the castle once they reach there uh that's what i'm trying to get across to you people there's one thing once they get in the big haunted castle and all that what's the first thing that frightens them stair pike oh listen oh boy uh i bring up uh, a democrat and the, Nothing wrong with that, Stair Pike. I just found out I have a trans grandson. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, everybody is it's can be who they are in this world. That's how I feel. Uh, as long as you have love in your heart and and care for uh, fellow man, woman, child, animal, pet, whatever, uh, to each your own. Listen, I have, I have. Um, family members who are yeah. see you brought it up and it gets kind of a discussion i bring up politics now let's bring that up um nothing wrong with that i wish love to every single person on this earth um 
everybody. And if they're one of the terrible ones, uh, you know, or a serial killer or something like that, probably wouldn't wish it so much, although they have issues. And they, some are born not even knowing that, too. Uh, so the love is always spread. So there you go. Uh, I think it's marvelous, this stair pike. Well, there you go. Good for you, man. Good for you. You know what? A lot of people wouldn't take that point of view. Who Just, we know you're 94 years old, you said. Uh, wouldn't take that point of view being older, right? Um, for for That says a million different things to your character that you would even be open to that and and understand it. Because listen, it's a different day and age. It's a day and age for people to be open and express themselves any way they want. There's going to be a lot of people who hate it and don't like it for many different re reasons, religious reasons, whatever. Um, but I can say for a fact, a fact, see, we're getting deep into this now, that, that people are born certain ways and i think scientifically we've even proven that let's move on um her her courage uh, humbles me so there you go uh hello again everyone connie is back how was the dinner how was everything um good to have you oh my god my pen just flew out of my fingers um again much love to each and every one of you did i did, i didn't i didn't get the answer okay who got it first let's see i can go back real quick because there's not a lot of chat tonight uh, good crowd, but um, Paul Ham gets a first. Yes, eight points to Paul Ham. It is the ghost, the ghost that comes out of this this cabinet curio trunk type thing. It's like huge. I don't know what you would call it, but it's on the ground. It lifts up, and later they come back, and after the ghost walks out and walks back, residual whatever that's what it kind of looks like because it's taken this path uh so it is the ghost it is the ghost paul ham has seen the movie yep purrs uh i can't believe we're getting through this pretty good too man um very very good and got a good turnout i love it 9 10 uh 85 thumbs up 15 away from 100 uh, love y'all. Much love, man. Got a lot of love going on tonight. Got a lot of love going on tonight. Don't forget tomorrow night, sat, uh, Sunday night, me and Ginger will be talking about Near Dark. If you haven't seen that movie or it's been a while, listen to us talk about it and discuss it tomorrow night. Uh, Near Dark is a, a, a wonderful vampire film from the uh, 80s and I love it. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite 80s horror, uh, vampire films but um uh let's see uh oh butterfingers uh near dark yes near dark tomorrow night uh me and ginger will uh most likely argue about it no i'm joking uh so next question here we go you guys spoiler alert wait no what hey no let's not spoil nothing oh my god i hope you love it ginger Hope you loved Near Dark. If you didn't, we'll talk about it tomorrow. So next question. How do they open the secret passage to the treasure at the castle? How do Larry Lawrence and Alex and, and Paulette Goddard, the crew, how do they open, how do they get to the treasure in the cast, yeah, good enough. <laughs> Dynamite. Yes, good to see it. Definitely. Church Bazaar was a big success. I'm full of goodies. Yum yum. Stair Pike. Um, yeah, this this one's Paul Ham. Paul Ham. When when did you watch the movie last, Paul Ham? Did you watch it today? I'm curious. But you are winning this week's trivia. You've got nine points. Next. Closest is Rich Cat Ranch with four and Ginger with one. Um, so, yes, playing the organ, keys, which they read up on the brick uh, stone, uh, which I think is playing the organ with notes on the wall. Yes, Jeff Crump, uh, to be exact. And as long as you said organ like Paul Ham did, 
uh, you've got the you've got the point playing the uh, organ. They blow it up nitrate stock film. <laughs> Danny, don't talk about the destruction of the historical. No, uh, the thing, the tang on the four bell. That makes me think of the ghost of Mr. Chicken. Yes, playing the organ. That a boy, Luther. Um. Yes, they see the the notes and, and keys and and all that stuff on the um stone wall there and it plays and it opens up the the door and it's pretty cool so there you go um very cool so next question uh getting close to 90 thumbs up awesome 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 um yeah it goes to mr chicken another great one don Knotts. uh where would I put that in my list? I mean, it's, I, I love the film, but I don't think it's in the same category as these. Um, anyways. Uh, okay. Well, I think I said this earlier. Let's see if anybody was paying attention. I'll read it anyways. I'll read it anyways. Let's see if anybody even knows. Uh, who did the villain turn out to be in the end who was the villain who turned out to be the villain in the end of this movie name elude to the character whatever you want to do oh one bullet barney harry scott agnes moorhead frenchy duvall What, and again, uh, I said, or elude to the character. <laughs> it was Jeff Montgomery, um, who was the wannabe boyfriend, Paul Ham. So Paul Ham, that may, gives you an even 10 points. Um, Jeff Crump says Jeff. And hey, Jeff Crump, um, don't see you really in the chat. So uh, it's good that you popped on here and and. and I don't know if you came late, but it seems like you know uh, the Ghost Breakers, and um, good to have you here. Good to have you here. Uh, yeah, Harry Scott, uh, they led you to believe it was Anthony Quinn, or, well, but let me get to, uh, listen, I thought I had another question. Okay, that leads me to another, another question. How many characters does Anthony Quinn, who plays in this film, Anthony Quinn, the great legendary Anthony Quinn, how many characters does Anthony Quinn play in this movie? How many characters does he play in this movie? And you would not believe it. You would not believe it. <laughs> All right, Dan, I'm trying. 317. You, you smart Alec. You smart Alec. Uh, Paul... <laughs> I tried to overemphasize, you won't believe how many characters Anthony Quinn played in this movie. You will not believe it. But uh, the first person who, to pull it in was um, uh, was Paul Ham. So that's 11 points for you. You're a, it's, blow, it's a blowout today. Hey, John Victor comes in with two. He, he's doing it too. Uh, correct. Yes, yes, all of them. Ginger, all of them, really? He played Paul at Goddard's part. Um, uh, Jeff Crump was working a favorite movie of mine. Well, good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you chimed in. It's always good to see people chat and get to know names and people who are on the channel. It's a tough night. The kids got people over and uh, the dogs going barking like crazy. Anyways, um, Paul Ham has seen the movie. That's cheating. Stair bike. What? <laughs> you have to watch the movie. Uh, anyways, yes, two. He plays two roles, two characters, him and his twin brother. Him and his twin brother. And at the end of the movie, they try to blame, or Paula Goddard thinks it's Ramon's twin brother who is doing this, the villain of the movie. And uh, alluded to earlier, um was the wannabe boyfriend, uh, Jeff from Montgomery, who is the true answer. So, uh, and 
Another question. Another question. Let's keep it going. It's it's worth watching Paula Goddard. Oh, woo! Yeah, when she swims to the castle in her bathing suit, or, or her one piece, and puts on her little robe and runs up to the castle. Yeah, listen, she's she's cute and she takes off the thing and her hair's all dry and still fluffed out it's like it's like listen paula goddard man cutie cutie uh, anyways uh what was uh, speaking of the villain jeff montgomery okay uh the villain of the movie at the end what was he after in the end what was he after might be a trick question you have to know what he said to know what he was after. Because you would think one thing. But you need to see the movie to understand. And say exactly what he was after. So uh, let's see if. Uh, uh, Paul Hamill will probably get this. But uh, what was he after? If you get the right answer. And haven't seen this movie. It's a real event. Uh, true that. True that. Uh, John Victor liked this movie so much we watched it twice in a row. Nice. Uh, Paul Ham. No, no. Oh, see? I said a little tricky. A little tricky. Um, who was the. Who got it first? Let's see. Uh, CM, take care. See you later. Uh, thank you, Dino and Mods. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you, CM, as always. Hey, hey, hey. It's Dave Pluffet. The one and only. He says the island. Uh, he wasn't after the... Well, <sighs> technically he was after the island. He was trying to convince her to sell her the island for $50,000. But he mentions at the end of the movie that he is after one thing and John Victor got it right. It is the silver vein which extends the length of the island. The silver vein, the silver mine, silver vein, the silver under the castle. So, and it stretches. The, he says it. It's his last words. Um, so, John Victor, you got a point, buddy. Uh, coming in here late, but one point to you. So, it, it, you can say treasure, but I was going for that technical, technically wins. <laughs> The exact wordage was, I'm, I, I was trying to get, I'm, I want the silver vein under the silent. He had the gun and all that good stuff. So there you go. So I'm being precise. So very cool. Uh, again, don't forget to watch overnight tonight, you guys. I've got a couple more questions still. Um, good list of shows tonight. Very, very good list. Put them together um, last night. And, um, yeah, clues and crime, uh, detective old time radio shows tonight. So there you go. Clues and crimes, mixed bag detective. There's the link by rich cat ranch. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, so here we go. Uh, good to see you here, Dave doing the Irish sliding. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, Dino's ruling is final. Yes, it is. That's why I said a little tricky because you can say treasure because silver is treasure in a lot of people's minds. Silver is money. Silver is of value, but it was what he said. Anyways, on to the next question. Uh, here we go. Uh, speaking of that and timestamps. Yes. Timestamp Saturday. You guys, are, you guys are just pushing the limit. Pushing the limit is what you're doing. Um, Oh, geez, you guys, you guys. Uh, so here we go. Um, how does Jeff Montgomery, the villain of this film, find his demise? And you can throw in by whom, but how does he find his demise? It's funny because Harry Scott said it earlier um, at the wrong point of the trivia night. Uh, but yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> What is, how does Jeff Montgomery find his demise? And by whom? There you go. Uh, Paul Ham, do you know by who? Who did he find his demise by? Who did it? Falls through the floor, Paul Ham. 
point number 12. Um, do you know who? Boom, boom, boom. Falls to the floor by the butler. Trap door opens above him. Um, yeah, I, that's the exact sequence, Dave Plouffet. <laughs> that's why you should have said silver mine or silver vein. The exact words is what he wanted. Uh, but yes, I know Dave Plouffet loves this film too. Uh, we are in the same mindset. Uh, this is a classic. Yes, um, Alex, Alex, uh, Willie Best, he did it. He did it. Um, and he looks down from above the trap door where it lets Jeff Montgomery plummet to his death also. So there was like a two level kind of thing going on there. It was, it was interesting. Uh, he gets a bucket of gravy thrown on him and eaten by Andy Devine. Uh, and listen, Dave, watch what you say. <laughs> watch what you say, my friend. Uh, we're living in a different day and age, but uh, yes, there were lots. I said that at the beginning of the film, uh, Dave, that there were so many, like really funny and good one-liners said by both Willie Best and Bob Hope throughout this film that wouldn't go over well today. Um, th that it, it just makes this, I mean, it, it just adds to the movie, adds to the movie. Uh, I first watched this as a kid, he says, on a rainy day, the family film festival with Tom Hatton Holston. Uh, he was our super hostino. Very cool, Dave Pluffet. Yeah, yeah. See, those are the things that make these, Comfort films to us. We've seen them as a child. They connect to us. And the good ones will always stick around. And when you're older and in your adulthood, you know, you find out that, hey, I need to watch a movie again. I'm feeling a little down today. You know, I'm, I'm watching that. I'm watching that. Um, I've got one more question. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Uh, last question of the evening. Um, since he was a, like, kind of not an old time radio guy, but a, uh, a, a radio personality at the beginning of the film, he was talking and doing kind of his, his, uh, reporting on the commercial break, uh, uh, Larry Lawrence and what commercial does Bob Hope do? At the start of the movie, in that commercial break that he, he was doing at the uh, radio station. So what commercial does Bob Hope, Larry Lawrence, uh, do at the start of the movie? And if you name it, the actual... Okay, somebody named it. Now, Paul Ham, name the actual coffee. Do you remember the coffee? The name of the coffee that he was promoting. Oh, look at that. Uh, Paul Ham, you got the point, but Jeff Crump comes up with Cronin Coffee. Yes, that is the exact words, uh, Kremel hair tonic. Cronin. Oh, Paul Ham's got it too. Here, Cronin. To Cronin Coffee. Uh, uh, great commercial. Um, there was a Charlie Chan uh, episode where the, uh, the whole show revolved around um, uh, Charlie Chan and the Wax Museum revolved around a radio station and the radio announcer had to come to the table at during the, I won't give it away, but um, if you haven't seen Charlie Chan and the Wax Museum, you need to go watch it. Sidney Toller uh, was the Charlie Chan, but um it revolves around kind of the same thing. And there's an early uh, part where, and who, who done it um, with Abbott and Costello, old time radio. It, the, it, the whole thing revolves around the old time radio show and a murder actually occurs during the show and they reenact it and all this. Other. So there's, there's a few shows that do that back in the day, which sounds right because it's the time period, right? Um, murders would take place at a, a, a movie, uh, you know, stage uh, production or, or movie production nowadays. Similar, you know, to that, but a lot, a lot, lot, lot. Yep, yep, yep. And, and Abbott and Costello, who done it? Yep. Uh, it was also around a radio station. And Dave Plouffet, that was one of the funniest 
So Cronin Coffee, good on you, Jeff and Paul Ham. Uh, I love Abbott and Costello's Who Done It. There's one of my one of the funniest scenes ever that cracks me up every time in hysterics is when they're running from the police, the detectives, uh, the police, uh, when Abbott and Costello are pretending to be detectives. They run from them and they hit into the the record department, the sound effects department where they got these records set up and he, and, uh, Abbott Costello hits the, uh, not, not Bud Abbott, Lou, Lou, what am I talking about? He hits the record player and it starts speaking and listen here, coppers, you know, that kind of thing. And then the next one, he, he moves up a little bit, he hits it and, and he gets stabbed with a knife, I think, uh, and he, and, Lou's going, oh, oh. And then the third one is, I gotta get, he shoots a gun. And this is all playing on the record that he hits each time. And he thinks he's dying because, listen, funniest scene ever. I don't know. It makes me laugh every time. And it's up there as one of the funniest scenes in, in an Abbott and Costello film. Uh, anyways, uh, with that said, um, oh my God, I hope the chair ain't going to sink me down. So with that said, that's all the questions really. And um, Paul Ham uh, in a landslide, in a landslide with uh, 13 points for the Ghost Breakers Trivia Night. 13 points for you. Uh, Ginger got on the board with one at the very beginning and then probably had to paint her nails and gave up. Um, or put mayo on a sandwich she's eating. I don't know, some turkey. Do you got the turkey salad already? Is it going on two slices of bread with cheese? Um, John Victor got one and Rich Cat Ranch got a four, four. Uh, so there you go. Everybody congratulate, uh, Paul Ham. Good job. Good job. Good job. Sorry. I'm getting seen now. Uh, uh, did seem like it. Uh, Ginger got one point. Yes, she did. Sorry. And thank you, Kathy, Jeff, the big floor model. Um, and it had that one guy with the voice from old time radio. I am drawing a blank now. Dave Plouffe. Yeah, I can't remember names. I'm not good Yeah, with that. The short-term memory. All the Red Skeleton uh, Whistling Film Series. Yeah, RTN. That's another one. Uh, look up Red Skeleton uh, uh, Whistling. Uh, I forget the exact name of the movies, but the, the Whistling series of films done by Red Skeleton, they're, they're in the same vein as Ghostbreakers and, and the whodunit kind of murder mystery type things. Uh, and they're very well done. Uh, I love them. They, they are good. I love the one with Red Skelton. I, I forget which uh, movie it was, but it's the one where they get trapped in the underneath in the mine, and the water starts to fill up, and and you know they're trying to get you know find their but and he's still cracking jokes uh, like Red Skelton would, and uh, a very very um, who done it? Shemp says. Uh, <laughs> But yes, I'm working on a Philco 41. Yeah, oh, the old radios are fantastic, man. Um, she was prepping for tomorrow evening's movie. Yes, and again, tomorrow night, catch me and Ginger for Near Dark. Listen, I think every every discussion that we have is, is gold. I thought me and Ted, uh, every movie discussion we did over the seven years, I think for, for the most part, every single one of them were gold. Uh there were times we laughed. There were times we cried. There were times we... <laughs> Listen, they're fun. It's fun to discuss a movie, not just review it. We all know the director. We all know the actors. We all know the scenes. We all know what's going on. For the most part, the people who come to check out these movie reviews. But to have a, a kind of a personal kind of discussion about the movie... Uh, I think makes for something special. Hey, I'm watching two people just talk about this movie and from beginning to end, talk about it and discuss it and what they thought on it and, and bringing up good points on certain issues and certain things, certain actors. Why did he do this? Why did she do that? Uh, I think it always makes for good, good talk. <laughs> Dave Bluffet, gold, Jerry, gold. You know, why do they call Ovaltine Ovaltine? The jar's not round. The lid's not round. Why don't they call it round teen? 
It's gold, Jerry. It's gold. Anyways, Jerry Seinfeld. Um, uh, so let's see. Uh, there were times I couldn't see anything but a black screen. Tonight? Where do you find parts that must be difficult to find vacuum? Oh, you guys are <laughs> listen. Okay, you guys are going on. A food movie for Friday night. The family would like a Radio Land Murders all out OTR, a murder at a radio network. Yeah, there's so there's lots of ideas, Denny. There's things I could do on this channel that if I got enough people involved could be interesting. Uh, no, the early movie reviews here. Oh, oh. Oh, okay, gotcha, Rich Cat. Yeah, yeah. No, they're, yeah, they're, I, I think, I think. Ovaltine, a, a crummy commercial. Son of a, a crummy. Do you mean crummy? Because Ovaltine's kind of bits of little chocolate pebbles, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Listen, don't put down my, where's my, my chocolate Ovaltine. You see it up there? It's sitting up there. Anyways. Dino uh, yearns uh, for Seinfeld. Listen, I've seen it so many times. I I know word for word. Yeah, there's a there's a jar of Ovaltine up there. Uh, word for word. Okay, so listen, you guys. Um, we we are seven away. Thumbs up from a hundred. Be sure on your way out, hit that thumbs up button. I'm sure we'll get there after the fact. But um, also, you guys, uh, definitely uh, for anybody who hasn't heard uh, the Patreon. I'm, I'm going to try to up boost more stuff on there, even though if you get movie nights every Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. But because I can't put comedy shows and other shows in that vein that I don't put on here, on, on because I can't handle two channels, uh, Patreons are going to get two streams a week of comedy, you know, Variety shows, you name it, thousands upon thousands of shows that are not, I don't put on here, are going to be up on my Patreon twice a week. Exclusive 12-hour streams there for you to watch with timestamps so you'll know what they are. For the Patreons, a certain tier level, the $10 level is what I'm changing that will be for them. So I've got to do that because... Patreon, boop, plummeted. Um, so I got to do something. Anyways, no use for a name popping in right at the end. Okay, I'm going to get ready uh, about 20 minutes for the overnight tonight, you guys. Um, so I will see you there very soon. Let me get this uh, ready to uh, shut off. And with that said, much love to each and every one of you. And till tomorrow night's. Uh, I won't see you until tomorrow night's movie discussion with Ginger, but uh, see you in the chat over at the Old Time Radio 